What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and welcome back to another episode of my still unnamed Overwatch map aesthetic analysis series. And as you all requested in the poll following my last map analysis video, today I'll be taking a look at the beautiful Italian map, Rialto. Honestly, I'm really glad you all picked Rialto because Venice is such a beautiful city in general and there's so much I love about the Rialto map in Overwatch. However, there are also a number of things about this map which I feel like are sort of missed opportunities. So I feel like there's a ton to talk about and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on in, starting in the Attacker's Spawn Room. Now, as I've talked about in previous videos, Overwatch tends to have very, very nicely detailed attacker first spawn rooms since, you know, when you're playing a match, you're going to be spending a lot of time here if you're on the attacking team waiting for the match to start. So it makes sense to put, you know, extra effort into this part of the map. And Rialto is by far one of the best first attacker spawn rooms in the entire game. The location itself in Universe is an Omnic art gallery featuring artwork by Leonora Batruvio. And the different art pieces we see present inside the museum are... Well, downright fascinating. As if the idea of an Omnic making art wasn't interesting enough, the actual artwork we see present here is kind of bizarre. I absolutely love how abstract and yet very science fiction-y so many of these pieces end up feeling to where you're not really sure how many of these pieces are just clever sort of practical illusions to make them look more fantastical than they actually are, and how many might be actually implementing some kind of bizarre sci-fi technology in order for them to manifest. Like, obviously the fact that many of these are levitating seems pretty science fiction-y in its own right, but the intricacy and the textures and the details of so many of these pieces just feel so mysterious and mystical, but at the same time very sort of technology-esque. All around, I think this location is phenomenal. Easily one of my personal favorite attacker for spawn rooms, and has some of the best detailing in the entire game. But as much as I might like to just hang out in the art gallery all day, there is a great map to explore outside of the building itself. And first off, let's take a look at the map's payload, which is perhaps one of the more mysterious payloads we have in the game, especially at this point, given that it appears to be a postal delivery cart, hover cart of course, carrying an unmarked box. Now we can clearly see from the little labels on the side of the box that whatever is inside of it is quite fragile, but it doesn't give any hints as for what exactly is inside it. Honestly, the best guess at what's inside it is that it's likely some sort of artwork, either stolen or recently purchased from the art gallery itself, since we know that Talon seems to have a strange fascination when it comes to artifacts and different kinds of historical artwork. And given that the final point of the map is the Talon HQ, which of course I'll be getting onto at the end of this video, it seems like the objective of this mission is likely for us as the players to be escorting some sort of artifact or piece of art from the museum to the Talon HQ. However, I'm willing to bet that there's a bit more to this than simply that, as we've seen in other payloads on other maps, most notably being the Route 66 payload, there can often be some pretty fantastical surprises hidden within the payloads themselves, even if it takes years for us as the player base to realize what's actually going on there. So while at this point I think it's safe to say that we'll never find out what's inside this box prior to the launch of Overwatch 2, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing some interesting developments with this particular package come the sequel. But enough about the payload itself, let's move on to the actual city, which immediately, right off the bat, we get three bridges, offering three different routes, crossing the first of a couple canals we'll end up encountering, and honestly, it's Venice, you gotta have the canals, and I love the way this first set of bridges is implemented. Not only are they fantastic environmental hazards for the first part of the map, since there's always the risk of being knocked into the water below, but also it matches up with the actual aesthetics of real-life Venice. In case you didn't know, the real-life Venice is built on a lagoon, and so there's tons of canals throughout the entire city, and of course tons of bridges because of that, so I love how we just have this single canal going through with three separate bridges, emphasizing that 
yeah, you need to have a lot of bridges in order to cross all those water. And I just think it does a great job of encapsulating the vibe and aesthetics of the actual city of Venice, which we will be seeing more of later on as I continue through the map. Some other real quick details I'd like to point out though is of course the gondola we can see hovering here. We're going to see quite a few of these over the course of Rialto, many of which are piloted by little Omnic gondoliers, which are some of my favorite little details on this map. But in addition to this, we can also immediately see a very interesting architectural structure going on here, which are these steel support beams that are holding up many of the buildings we see throughout the map. They come in various shapes, sizes, and forms depending on which particular building you're looking at here in Rialto, and of course these are semi-futuristic replications of the actual support structures keeping the real-life Venice afloat, which if you're not too familiar with, I would totally recommend looking into on your own time since this is not the right video for me to delve into that, but it is incredibly fascinating just how Venice actually exists in the real world. And so I just love that this is a detail they included to emulate the real-life Venice while also giving it a bit of a futuristic, almost sci-fi sort of twist. And while I'm thinking about it, I'll also point out these little repair slash cleaning drones, which we can see sort of floating around some of the areas here. There's not a whole lot going on with them, but I like them because they add a bit more activity to the city itself. A lot of Overwatch maps sort of suffer from this feeling of like emptiness, where you have this big extravagant map and all these buildings and cities and whatnot but nothing's actually happening in them. And while the presence of the boats and gondolas we see floating around do add a bit of activity to the map itself, I do like that we also get these little drone repair bot things because they just add a small bit of extra life to the map itself, which honestly, I really, really appreciate. Truly some phenomenal detailing across the board right off the bat upon exiting the museum, but moving on to some of the more specific details we can see throughout Rialto, first up upon crossing the bridge we can see a wine shop. This seems like a very fitting sort of store to have in an Italian city since, you know, Italians, they're quite fond of wine. And so I love that they included just this small little shop here where you could imagine people going in to pick up a few bottles, maybe do a little taste testing. Very, very fitting aesthetically. Across the way from the wine shop, we have a, unfortunately, rather useless set of rooms. There's this upstairs sort of empty area here, and then if we drop down, there's another sort of empty area down here. Nothing going on in there. More or less, I'd probably consider these two to be useless rooms and that they don't seem to have any real-world practical use, but nonetheless, I think they look nice enough for what they are and they fit well into the city, so not really a big issue there. And moving across the street from these buildings, though, we get a Grand Hotel, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the actual name of because I don't speak Italian and I'd probably butcher it pretty badly, so I'll just save all of you from that disgrace by just saying it's a Grand Hotel, it's got an Italian name, and I'd rather not butcher it. Coming inside, though, we can see a very nice front lobby and desk area, which I must admit totally puts the hotel on King's Row to shame, since not only does it have all the hallmarks of a hotel front desk with, you know, the desk itself and computers, a little cubby with room keys, and of course the trolleys for moving your luggage around, but also just the detailing and the decorations in here are phenomenal. You have the cool sort of water effect going on with the windows, some nice lighting coming down from the ceiling, and even moving across the way, you have some interesting looking artwork going on over here on the wall. And all around, I just have to say, this hotel has a very, very high class vibe going for it. We can see this vibe continue as we go upstairs and can see the upper portion of the elevator here. However, much like many other buildings in Overwatch, it has one glaring issue, which is that there's no way to physically access the presumed rooms which are above it. Of course, we have an elevator, which I guess is the only realistic way to actually get up there, but unless fire safety regulations have changed pretty substantially by the year 2070, that is not safe to only have an elevator to get up to the actual rooms. You just gotta have some sort of stairs. It's way more convenient to have it that way and a heck of a lot safer. 
We can, of course, see the outside of these upper floors, though, and what are presumably the actual hotel rooms. You can't see actually inside the windows at all, but it's nice that we know there is, you know, some sort of realism going on there in terms of there being rooms you can enter. But I just wish they had, I don't know, like a closed doorway or like a sort of sectioned off area showing stairs going up to them, since that would just be a bit more realistic with the detailing. But overall, given the outstanding visuals of the hotel itself, I really can't complain that much. Moving past the hotel though, we have a very lovely little courtyard area where I guess you could almost call this like a mini park of sorts since they have some little flower beds that just seem to have bushes in them and a little tree up here. And coming over to this little corner here, we have a few little tables and chairs with umbrellas, which are in front of a gelato store, which is another iconic Italian treat that they're selling here. And going inside, we come to the attacker's second spawn room, where we can actually see the gelato selection with all their waffle cones and ice cream makers and other little devices involved in the gelato making process, but it looks like they don't actually have any gelato in the coolers at the moment, which is disappointing. It would have been fun, I think, if they had a little like different colored, you know, things just in each of those little trays to represent the gelato itself, but hey, I like the detail they did give it. Backtracking just a little bit though, I want to take a quick look over here at what is a perhaps more appropriately titled park in that there's much more greenery going on with actual grass and some flowers and a number of benches and even a little soccer ball slash football. But my favorite detail of this particular part of the map is this little water well. Despite the fact that Venice is built on a lagoon, you can't actually drink the water in the canals because it's uh, salt water and I'm sure a lot of nasty things end up in there. So one of the big issues for the real life Venice is getting drinkable water. So I like that they included what is clearly some sort of semi-futuristic water well that's probably bringing up water from deep beneath the seafloor. And then you even have a little spigot spout thing that says, aqua potable, basically just saying, this is water you can drink. It's just such a tiny little detail to include on this map, but I personally just really like it for whatever reason. I don't know, it's just an interesting sort of thing that I feel like most people don't really think about when it comes to cities like Venice or maps based on this city, so I love that Blizzard included this kind of small little detail. Moving back into the main courtyard area though, we do have a couple shops along this wall here. Here we have what appears to be a colored lens work shop, I guess you would say? The name we see above the doorway here translates to dichroic, which is a type of lens used to filter out different colors, thus having a sort of stained glass effect where you have light passing through look like it's a specific color. And while we unfortunately don't actually see any stained glass or colored lenses in the workshop itself, we do see some of these glass smelting machines, which are actually identical to the ones seen on Malavento in the glass workshop there. So we can assume that these are likely being used to produce different lenses for some some sort of practical or artistic purpose. And overall, it's just a rather interesting sort of shop for them to include here. Again, stained glass production, not something most people I think really think about, but it's a unique little workshop to have because I don't know, I mean, it's a thing that exists. So heck, why not stick it into the map? Across the way though, we do get a little fish market, which I quite enjoy. I like how you can see the little crabs, fish, and you know, even like vegetables and stuff over here, which of course is a very fitting shop to have in a city like Venice, where it's right on the water and fishing is, you know, easily accessible. So not a whole ton to say about this particular shop, but I like it. It's nice to have a little fish shop like this. However, having nitpicked all the fine details I could find on the first part of the map, let's move on to the second portion of Rialto, where we once again get a large, very beautiful canal, this time featuring actual gondolas and gondoliers floating through. Aesthetically, this is perhaps the most iconically Venice part of Rialto, as the canals and gondolas are probably the most well-known features of the city itself. So I really love that we have this sort of busy waterway going on here, where we can see just a number of boats going through, as if, you know, they're just going about their daily routine, carrying around tourists, or going from one place to another, which of course, again, adds liveliness to the city itself, which is something most maps are just sort of lacking. 
Needless to say, it's a very lovely detail for them to include, and one that's very fitting for a map set in Venice. But moving on now, next up we have the Bel Canto Opera Theater. This portion of the map over here definitely has a much more posh and sort of fancy vibe going for it than the initial part of Rialto does. And what better way to represent it than with a very fabulous looking theater. I absolutely love the detailing of this theater lobby here with the balcony of the second floor overlooking it, the little desk here with the giant poster behind it advertising what I assume is a specific opera being featured here. And it just has so many lovely little details like the couches, the tables, the wallpaper, the plants, the curtains. Everything here looks so fancy and elegant as you would expect in this type of opera theater. However, much like the hotel I talked about at the beginning of Rialto, this opera does suffer from one very blatant issue, which is the absence of the actual theater itself. The room we see in here is simply the lobby, and as fantastic as it looks, there's no indication whatsoever of any doorways or staircases or even elevators in this case going to any sort of actual opera theater. Even if we just consider the physicality of there potentially being a theater up above on the third floor that's completely inaccessible, there's not actually that much room up there just based on the size of the building itself. Despite having what is perhaps the fanciest lobby in all of Overwatch, it doesn't seem like the theater itself, if it's actually up here on the third and fourth floor, would really have much going on for it, just given how little space there is for it to work with. I'm sure that was more than anything a practical limitation Blizzard had to deal with, as it wouldn't really make sense to feature an entire theater room that the player could go into in terms of the gameplay side of Rialto. But certainly when you're trying to account for the realism of the map itself and the details we see here, it does feel a bit underwhelming and disappointing that there's there isn't more evidence of a proper theater inside the opera theater. However, immediately adjacent to the opera theater, we can see a very, very posh store, which seems to be selling dresses, shoes, and other sorts of fancy attire. Personally, my favorite aspect of this room is the ceiling, which has a very interesting design, which on top of that seems to have some sort of visual effect going on to emulate the sky when it's in actuality just a ceiling. Once again, Blizzard is taking a very small, very insignificant significant room in terms of gameplay and are just going all out with the visuals and theming of it. I absolutely love what they do with this and it's pretty unique from anything else we see. However, despite the fanciness of this little shop and the opera next to it, beneath both these structures we have what is, in all honesty, my favorite room in the entire map. And that's the Defender's first spawn room, which at first glance appears to just be some sort of musky, ugly basement. But when you look more closely and pay attention to the actual detailing of this particular room, I think it just has so much more to say about the Overwatch Rialto map than perhaps any other single location we see here. And what it says is that the posh opera and clothing store we see above are actually built on top of these sinking buildings of what I can only assume is the original Venice. For those of you who don't know, the real-life Venice is actually sinking due to a number of issues, which again are way too complicated for me to delve into in this video. The actual city is soon going to be below sea level. Maybe it won't be for many more years, but by the year 2070, it's reasonable to assume that many, if not all, of the original buildings in Venice will end up at least partially underwater. And what I think this one single, small, seemingly insignificant room says is that that is in fact what ended up happening to Venice in the Overwatch universe. The fancy streets and buildings we see throughout most of Rialto in this map aren't the original Venice. These are likely structures that were built a bit later on after the sea level had risen and much of the original city had sunken down. And especially when you consider the location of this particular musky, almost basement type room with the two buildings above it being incredibly fancy in terms of their design and function, it just feels so disturbing almost to realize that these elegant structures are built on the now obscured remains of the old city. 
Rather than attempting to preserve the original structures, whoever was running the city in the past eventually just gave up and decided to build higher. Which, when you think about it in that way, is a abnormally bleak outlook for an Overwatch map. Overwatch, for the most part, tends to have an incredibly optimistic and hopeful view of the future. So to see that Rialto is not actually Venice, but rather a new Venice built on top of the old sunken Venice that obviously they were just unable to save, that just says so much about what's going on in this city, particularly when you consider the presence of Talon, which we'll be getting onto towards the end of the map. Anyways though, moving on from that portion of the map, next up we come to one of the final sections of Rialto, which is the dock area. Now, overall, I quite like this portion of the map. The inclusion of a proper dock going out into... I don't even know if you'd consider this a canal at this point. This is just straight up like a harbor where you have ships parked all along the docks on all sides. And I love just the diversity of the ships we actually see out here. We have little personal motorboats, gondolas, ferries of some kind that look like they're giving tours to tourists, along with fishing boats and other sorts of personal vessels. It really is just such a lovely range of different water vehicles being used here, which again fits perfectly into the aesthetics of Rialto. One thing I will say in particular here is that I'm not the biggest fan of the inclusion of this wall we see here. Obviously, this is a structure that doesn't actually exist in the PvE version of Rialto, and likely only exists for gameplay balance reasons, which I understand that they would have to include it for a reason like that, but visually, I just feel like it cuts off too much of the scenic view of the harbor itself from, well, the streets where the players actually play. So I think it'd be nice if it didn't exist, but I understand why they probably had to put it in. Another notable room I'll take a look at real quick is the attacker's final spawn room, which, to be honest, is perhaps one of the most clever rooms in all of Overwatch. Often I'll complain about useless rooms that don't seem to serve any sort of practical, realistic function in the Overwatch universe, and you could almost say that for this room as well, except that it's just a room being renovated. So of course it's going to be impractical and not have any function, because it's a room being worked on. We can see that the walls are being painted, it looks like they have some pictures or paintings they're going to be putting up, much of the furniture is covered to keep it from getting paint on it. This is such a genius way to take what could easily have just ended up being a useless room that's served only the gameplay function of being a spawn room and nothing else, and turning it into a, well, kind of realistically useless room. We don't know what it'll end up looking like once they finish refurbishing it, but I just love the idea of making one of the rooms a room that's being refurbished, because of course that is something that exists. Moving on to the final portion of the map though, we enter what is probably the most unique portion of the entire map, and that's the Talon HQ. From the very outset, this portion of the map is visually very unique from the rest of Rialto. In terms of color, the warm red, yellow, and white bricks we see making up the vast majority of the structures in the first portion of Rialto stands in pretty significant contrast to the dark black and grays that make up this final structure. But beyond that, even the layout of this final portion of the map comes with a very, very ominous sort of vibe. We enter this final portion by going under a bridge, which then takes us into what is essentially a long, narrow courtyard. Unlike the lively streets I commented on earlier in the first portion of Rialto, this part of Rialto feels very dead. Despite how spacious many of these rooms and open areas are, there is nothing going on here. No robots cleaning the structure itself, no gondolas going back and forth through the canals. It is just silent and lifeless. Even looking at it from the perspective of just an individual person, these giant structures upon entering the central courtyard just make you feel so small and so insignificant, which is such a beautiful contrast from the warm, welcoming, and lively map we just spent the majority of the match on as we now enter the cold, dark realm of Talon. In fact, the transition is so abrupt that it almost gives you a feeling of paranoia, like suddenly everything is silent, as if something terrible is about to happen, or somebody's about to jump out and attack you. 
It's honestly a tonal shift that I don't think any other map in Overwatch pulls off nearly as effectively. And this aspect alone is perhaps one of the reasons why I think Rialto is one of, if not the, best maps in the entire game. At least when it comes to the visuals and aesthetics. But taking a closer look at this final portion of the map, first off we have to explore the downstairs basement where we can see a Talon Armory. The walls of this room are lined with various different Talon weapons, which are actually the weapons we see being used by the Talon PvE enemies in the Archives missions. Once again, this room has a very ominous feeling to it, as like the rest of this latter portion of the map, it's very cold and lifeless, but this time just looking at all the weapons lining these shelves really paints a more intimidating picture of Talon. Moving back above ground though, and we go into the final stretch of the payload's journey, we enter yet another giant, very intimidating, very belittling room for anyone who walks into it. At the back we see a beautiful stained glass window which seems to be featuring either a rising or setting sun which illuminates a statue of the Greek goddess Hera. Now this statue actually has pretty significant story ties as we can actually see that it's identical to the statue of Hera present on the Ilios map which ties into the fact that we know Talon is stealing various artifacts and ancient artwork and are now showcasing it as part of their own private collections. I just love how ominous this room is overall, the unnecessarily high ceiling, the statue just gazing down upon anyone who enters, the overall darkness of the room itself with only the single stained glass window to illuminate this particular location. It's such a cool vibe that really emphasizes the enigmatic yet intimidating tone that Talon seems to be going for. But moving past the statue room, we go into the final room of the entire map, which is of course the Defender's final spawn room, and appears to be a meeting room for the Talon Council. As you would imagine, this room feels very villainous, with the stone emblem of the Talon logo on the wall over here, the spaced out chairs around a table which appears to be carved out of a singular large stone slab, and the ominous lighting shining down on what is honestly a pretty archaic looking setting. We do get these bizarre sort of boxes, which to me almost look like some sort of sarcophagus or like stasis chamber lining the wall on either side of the room and I'm not entirely sure what these are supposed to be. While they definitely carry some sort of interesting sci-fi vibe to them, I actually feel like they detract a little bit from the otherwise very low-tech vibe that seems to be going on in this room. With the walls and much of the furniture just being made out of cut stone and only having simple chairs and lighting for most of it, I almost feel like it's a bit of a letdown that they have these sort of sci-fi lockers lining the walls because, I don't know, it just seems to contrast it a bit too much in not the best of ways. That's just my opinion on this room though, overall I do love the ominous vibe they give off as they just sort of stand looking over this table that you imagine the council members would be seated at. So even if I don't find the tone here to be quite perfect, it definitely does a great job of being symbolic of how evil and ominous Talon is. So overall, needless to say, I think when it comes to the aesthetic details of Rialto, this map is downright fantastic. There is just so much intricate detail crammed into every nook and cranny of it, not only in terms of the specific visuals we see with the gondolas, canals, bridges, and architecture, but also the tone that's being conveyed through the various structures we see. The overall posh, very fancy and elegant, yet seemingly rather historical look of most of the buildings stands in stark contrast to the final portion of the map with the ominous, cold, and intimidating Talon HQ, and even evidence of the original Venice being buried somewhere beneath the water, beneath the structures we actually see on the surface. There are a few realism issues, of course, such as the opera theater not really having an actual theater within it, and the hotel not having any reasonable way to get up to the rooms other than the elevator, but honestly those are just nitpicks compared to the other outstanding detail going on on this map. So without a doubt, when it comes to the aesthetics of Rialto, I have to give it 10 out of 10 Omnic Operated Gondolas. That does it for my aesthetic analysis of Rialto. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on this Venice map by dropping a comment down below, and check out the link down in the description to vote on which map you'd like me to analyze next. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit up that bell icon, and come join my Discord server to hang out to never miss any of my future Overwatch and Overwatch 2 content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.